This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is the Fast Break Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. Alongside me, as always, is Ricky Wimmer. What's up, what's up, guys? And Dave Oster. Hey, everybody. And today, we are continuing our series of ranking the NBA starters. We have 30 players that are about to be put into the MVP machine, and we are going to come out with rankings 21 through 30, 11 through 20, and 1 through 10. If you did not see our point guard uh, edition of this, definitely go check that out on our YouTube page or on our Blog Talk Radio page or our iTunes page. We'd appreciate the love and support that you can give us there. You can also check us out on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod or you can help us. And if you want to see an upgrade to this room or to the equipment, both things, our camera and our computer, have crashed today. <laughs> you could help us out at patreon.com slash Most Valuable Podcast. Uh, we'd Absolutely appreciate the support, whether that be at the uh, bronze tier, the silver tier, or the gold tier. If you do join the gold tier, you can call in on this phone and call in on the broken, rundown computer. And most people might even be noticing <laughs> that it's usually a PC over yeah. here, and now we're running a Mac. Uh, just some of the things that you got to do uh, when you're in a crunch. Mm-hmm. So we are excited for this. We are going to rank our starting point guard, our starting shooting guards for uh, the NBA going into the 2019-2020 season. It is crazy that it is 2020, boys, but let's jump into it. Starting 21 through 30. Ricky, you're going to give your 21 through 30. Dave's going to give his 21 through 30. I'm going to give my 21 through 30. And then finally, we will give you the cumulative 21 through 30, where we put all those rankings together and got you a final rankings, the true rankings of where we think these guys stand. Well, I'm going to start off number 30, last shooting guard in the NBA, Dion Waiters. Um, then at 29, Nicholas Batum. Um, Norman Powell coming in at 28. Um, Wesley Matthews at 27. Dylan Brooks at 26. Derek White, after much debate, at 25. Um, Evan, don't Google my name, Fournier, um, at 24. Darius Garland at 23. Luke Kennard at 22. And at 21, the Red Mamba, Kevin Herter. Dave, 21 through 30. Sure. At uh, number 30, I've got Nicholas Batum. At 29, it's Wesley Matthews. 28, Dion Waiters. 27, Dylan Brooks. 26, Darius Garland. 25, Kevin Herter, the Red Mamba. I uh, just had to clarify that for the people Red who Mamba. didn't know the Red Mamba's nickname. Uh, at 24, I do have Norman Powell. 23, RJ Barrett. 22, Gary Harris. 21, Evan Fournier. All right, my 21 through 30. At 30, I have Darius Garland. At 29, I have Dion Waiters. At 28, I have Nicholas Batum. 27, I have Wesley Matthews. 26, I have Norman Powell. 25, I have Dylan Brooks. 24, I have Kevin Herter. 23, I have R.J. Barrett. 22, I have R.J. or Andrew Wiggins. Uh, and pretty much R.J. Barrett. Uh, same guy, both Canadian. Uh, <laughs> wow. And then finally, uh, 21, I have Evan. Don't Google my last name, Fournier. Yeah, don't do it. Jake made me do it. And, well, he didn't make me, but he's like, hey, you should Google Fournier. And me being the gullible guy I am is like, sure, I'll do that. Yeah. Good job. Don't. <laughs> Here's our cumulative ratings coming in at 30. Dion Waiters, the worst starting shooting guard in our mind in the NBA. At 29, we have Nicholas Batum. 28, Wesley Matthews. 27, Darius Garland. 26, Dylan Brooks, who, funny enough, last year was 26. So he <laughs> did not move because he barely played last year. Then we'll move to 25, Norman Powell. 24, Kevin Herter. 23, Evan Fournier. 22, RJ Barrett. And 21, Derek White. For reference from last year, this one's kind of fun. We did have uh, Tony Snow and J.R. Smith tied for our worst shooting guards last year. Then we had Courtney Lee, not even pl- uh, not even a starter anymore. Reggie Bullock, not a starter anymore. Like we said, Dylan mm-hmm. Brooks at the same spot. Nick Batum falling down a little bit. Batum did play a little bit better this year, but he just he's kind of fallen off to a point where he's not even that good anymore. Uh, then we have Danny Green, who actually moved up. Buddy Heald, who massively moved up. Andre Roberson, who was hurt for a large majority of the season, and we don't even know if, when he's going to be back this year, if he is going to be back. Mm-hmm. And then Alan Krepp, who is was traded to set up KD. So the biggest casualty of the KD Kyrie signing was Alan Krepp. So big name falling off there. But let's jump in. I want to first talk about the actual qualities of the shooting guard because I look back at last year week and I was not excited to talk point guards at all. Mm-hmm. Being yeah. 100% honest. I think yeah. we had some pretty good segments, which was oh, good I'd, for us. I'd like to play so. But looking at this, and 
this these rankings, there's a lot of good guys at 21 through 30, and we're not even at like the the meat of the good players here. Mm-hmm. And when we first started this back in 2015, this was easily the worst position that we were doing. It was Clay Thompson, it was James Harden, it was CJ McCollum, it was Bradley Beal. And outside of that, it was a pretty weak position. Yeah. A lot of these guys have grown up. Have, have really come up. Obviously, it helps with some of these guys moving positions because some of them are traditionally point guards, but there's already point guards at the position, um, kind of like D'Angelo Russell or Shea Gilders Alexander that we'll talk about later. But it's really exciting to see this position kind of come back. No, I agree because it's one of the, honestly, I think it's one of the weakest depth wise that we've seen between this and uh, probably center. Yeah, center's I think been always the worst. feels yeah. like it's just like once you hit like a certain line of center like they're well, all after the same. Cat and Bead and and uh Jokic it's just like Yeah. It's the same guy. Yep. Can you block shoot and run <laughs> to the rim? <laughs> yeah, but no, I think the that's what kind of makes shooting guard fun cuz you get a diverse skill set cuz you get good slashers, you get good outside shooters, you get some guys who can do a little bit of everything. Uh you get ones who are still able to facilitate like you said. They might not be a point guard positionally, but they have the skill set of one. So they can keep the ball moving. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of variety as far as what you're looking for and why you're going to rank people as highly because you're going to value maybe outside shooting more than everybody else. So you're going to have three point snipers out there way higher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll start off with the the interesting or at least who I think is the most interesting out of these guys. There's a lot of good players here, but I think the most interesting for at least we know Ricky is going to be the rookies. We have R.J. Barrett mm-hmm. and Dar- Darius Garland here. Uh, Ricky, you had. RJ Barrett fairly high, and you had uh, and you had Darius Garland the highest as well out of us. Um, what do you like about these rookies? I just with me too. Where I actually wanted to put Darius Garland lower in my rankings. Okay, you could have. Um, it is your rankings. Well, it, the thing I looked at is everyone like <laughs> no one's had a gun to your head, but everyone below him probably the only two that I possibly would have put above him that I had was maybe Fournier, maybe Derek White, but like everyone else, it's like no. Darius Garland's going to play well this year. The only question I have with him is how the hell are him and Colin Sexton going to work together? Because said last week, are they going to play them together? And Dave's like, yeah, they are. And I'm like, well, why? Because you drafted a point guard, yeah. and then you drafted a point guard. Unless you're going to move, like Cavs fans, oh, we're going to move Colin Sexton to the two and have Garland be our one. It's like, I think what might happen is Colin Sexton gets pushed out of town. No. Garland then becomes your one. That's why I have Garland lower. R.J. Barrett, I can't wait to why see would what... You, why would you push Colin Sexton out of town? Why, if, why do you think I they're going to push him out of town? I just have a feeling that why? Garland... If you let me talk. Okay. I'm gonna, I have a feeling that Garland is going to play better. Garland is going to then play him a little bit at the point guard and then go, huh, we have a point guard here, and that's going to push... But Colin what, Sexton what, out of town, and then he'll be involved in some trade. What That's differentiates what I'm thinking. their their skill set to where Colin Sexton can't be a point guard? Well, oh, I'm, I'm not saying he can't. I just think that Darius Garland is going to what he brings. Where Colin Sexton, we talked last week, pure score. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm doing. Where Darius Garland will have a little bit more facilitating to his game, and Beeline's going to be like, hey, that's going to fit the point guard better than what Colin Sexton does. Than our better, what Garland's going to do better than Colin Sexton. But we, we talked about speak. this when we did you know our multiple mm-hmm. draft segments where we we really didn't see that passing or that facilitating from Darius Garland. Granted, he only played we five like, what, games four, for yeah. Vander, for Vanderbilt, but even then we didn't see you know massive assist numbers. And even then, uh, you know when you actually look at the tape, he rarely passed. And his number one ideal was always to score. But he's so, more of a passer than Colin Sexton. Like what at least we you, at least I mean, we saw passing from Garland where Colin Sexton was just they had nose the same down and assist going. numbers in college. They were the same player yeah, pretty much in but, my mind. When watching the tape, they were both guys that were mm-hmm. attacking the bucket. They were both guys that were looking to score. They were really the only options on their team when it comes to scoring. So that yeah, could have been the I, reason, but I, I saw the same amount of passing. I, I saw the same amount of ball movement it, from both players. It's not about when it comes to it, it's not about the numbers with them. It's about the ability to pass, where I think that Darius Garland is a better passer and is going to fit that better. That's what I just think. He's going to fit the point guard better and eventually be it. That's why I have him low, where RJ, he's the one that I can't wait to see what he does in New York because I can't wait to see how many points per game he puts up with that Knicks team that, yeah, I know they got a bunch of veteran power forwards, yes, they but do. he's going to be the number one guy. Yeah. He's going to be the scoring option. Com- comparing Garland and Colin Sexton's uh, college numbers, Garland had 2.6 assists to three turnovers, and Colin Sexton had 
3.6 assists to 2.8 turnovers. And I think last year, Colin Sexton, when we when we look at the run that yeah. he made, I think he was around 3.2 assists. Do you see the the Garland is a better passer than, than Sexton, like Ricky's saying? I don't know yet. I, I honestly don't. I think that it's that's, hard. That's where I come it, in it's from. It's just too hard to answer because his, we haven't col- seen him. his college tape was so short. His high school tape is only Knicks tapes. So you can't really see like how good uh, court vision he really has. You know, I, I do agree that both of them are definitely score first point guards. They're not looking to pass when they get the ball. They're usually just looking for how can I create an opportunity for myself. I think Garland shooting might allow him. Like I, I see guys with similar you know setups as him being better passers. Uh, Colin Sexton's more physical. Uh, absolutely can take it to the hoop and. Yeah, I, I just have the feeling that maybe in a, in a year or two, these two are going to be swapped positionally on our rankings. There's mm-hmm. a chance Sexton will just be the two guard, Darius to be the one guard, or maybe they'll just both be like the same. I mean, like, yeah. I don't think there's a huge difference between them right now. I think we saw half a season of amazing Colin Sexton. We saw a handful of games out of Darius Garland. So I, I really don't have an answer at this point. Yeah, my biggest thing with, with that is I think you might be right that they might be flipped positionally, but I think what we talked about this last week, I think we're just going to see times where – Garland's the the one, and then Sexton's the one. They're just going to pretty yeah. much alternate position, uh, alternate possessions uh, of being the guy who brings the ball up on the floor, and, and yeah. it might be the main uh, initiator of the play. But outside of that, I mean, they're both going to try to score, and that's going to be their main thing. And that's why I find it such a weird and and, and odd pairing, like you were saying, Ricky. Mm-hmm. Um, since they are so similar, maybe you do have to trade one of them. I, I don't think that's the case. At least year one, I think you got to see how they play throughout this because you're still worried uh, most likely about Garland being injured already when he, you know, after five games of his college career. Not saying he's injury prone, but that's definitely something you have to worry about. Colin Sexton hasn't had to deal with those injury issues in college and at least in, in his professional uh, career yet. So with that, I do want to see what Darius Garland can fully do throughout an NBA season. And along with that, I do think Colin Sexton has more ability, or, or, or at least a, a better opportunity to become a better defender yeah i think we've seen him be more engaged on that side of the floor and he plays bigger than what he is i always forget how small he is yeah he's like six two and he's he's similar to trey young when it comes to his wingspan um i know that was a big thing that i was getting harped over because i think i called count sex and six four but he plays like it <laughs> and, and, and he plays like a bigger guy and, and that's why he's got you know, some he's, muscle he, mass to him yeah he's got that nickname young bulls i i, I yep. think that he could play up like a bigger guard and i think that we most likely would see him at the two and i think we talked about this last or during the draft that they might take garland and i think that i would like sexton at the two and i think you yeah. you at least call me crazy dave um i don't know if i did or didn't i think so uh, we'll have to check the tape at some I point don't know. but yeah um, I, I i'm with you i hope it's not a situation like dsj and luca though like where mm-hmm. you get darius in town and you're just shipping uh Colin sexton out like, I get it. You want the ball in the best playmaker's hands. You you want to keep the offense running. But I think that, and let, I, I mean, look, Darius is not in the Luka category of talent. No. So I don't think that there's a enough cause to do a mid-year one trade. You know, that, that'd that be ridiculous. I think if that happens, a trade happens, it's going to be mid-season. Uh, yeah. Let's move to the other rookie. Ricky, you, you had R.J. Barrett at mm-hmm. 17. Um, what do you think his his role is going to be on that Nick team? He is just like his big thing this year because to me the Knicks are not going to compete for anything like a playoff spot or anything. He's going to establish himself as a the future of New York and be the leader of this team. When I say the leader of this team, I mean he puts the bucket in the hoop, and I want to see if he's not giving me at least eighteen a game. It's a failure for RJ. Like, I want Jeez. at least 20 a game. And I know that's shooting pie in the sky, but with what this team is, and he is the number one option, I think he can wow us is and give though? us 18 to 20 a game. Those are high expectations. I think it can um, happen. The, the when you're in, when you're in New York, here, the Big Apple, well, you got to have the high ones. One thing I want to say is you said yeah. that he's going to be a leader on the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think I he'll mean, be like, do you scoring think he'll, option? Yeah, but do you think he has that ability to be the also the leader in the locker room and also, the, or do you think it's too early to tell? Way too early because, I mean, they brought in – I think what it's going to be is this is going to be a growing year for him. Yeah. Um, because he's going to have to learn how to deal with the New York media. He's already got that a little bit under his belt um, with the few interviews that we've seen. But he's got to learn how to deal with the New York media. He's got to learn how to be a leader in that room. Because you don't just walk in and, yeah, you're the guy. But 
you got to earn that respect. And when you've got a ton of veterans coming in, this is going to be a, on that front, it's going to be a growing year for him. And I think he can learn a lot from those vets that they brought in, uh, like Julius Randle and Taj Gibson and such. You want yeah. to jump in? I, I was just wondering, is he going to be that scoring leader on the team? Because I think Julius Randle is like set up to put up like 24 points a game on this team. Mm-hmm. Like He was such a great, uh, great score on the Pelicans last year, and given the opportunity to feed him the ball, he's, he's just very, very good. And I think this team, we watched Kevin Knox kind of struggle when they tried to force the ball through him. Uh, that's why we saw a lot of the ISO heavy players like Lonzo Trier have really great success with this team because their offensive set really wasn't about ball movement and player movement, pick and rolls. It wasn't anything. It was just, let's, let's just play ISO ball for the Knicks. And I hope that now they've got new talent added on top, they really do come up with some great ways to get other guys involved. But if they don't, then I see Julius Randle being like the guy on this team. Mm. Yes. You're still going to have lobs, you know, to Mitch Robb. Uh, but Kevin Knox and R.J. Barrett, I, I do like Barrett more than Knox at this point. Mm-hmm. I think Knox is still like trying to figure out his own game and figure out where he fits on the floor. Hell, after Summer League, I like Iggy better than I like Knox right now. I mean, I'm just saying, R.J. Barrett was awful in Summer mm-hmm. League. Mm-hmm. Just just downright. It is Summer League. Uh, and that's fair. Mm-hmm. We, we, <laughs> I'm not one to you know cast stones, glass houses. I, I watched my point guard miss every single three-point shot he attempted, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, but... No, I think R.J. Barrett, just his skill set, he's probably going to be their number two, probably. I don't know that he, I don't know that I can expect 18 to 20 points a game mm-hmm. out of him because that's just, it screams like a lot on that team, and I don't know that he's going to have the ball in his hands that much. And and he might have the ball in his hands that much, but I think one thing, too, is R.J. needs volume to put up those type of numbers because yeah. he isn't efficient enough to be like Luka where Luka's coming in as a rookie and, you know, putting up, you know, 42% from the field and 32% from three. Those aren't exactly great efficiency numbers. They're, they're not. Um, I just realized <laughs> like, that when I started saying I was like, things. you do remember that Luka Sometimes, was inefficient because they traded his whole team, right? Well, let's talk about good Luka then. Because good Luka, like, well, here's the thing. <laughs> Try to salvage this. Remember uh, when Malcolm, uh, Michael Scott says sometimes I start a sentence I don't even know where it's going to end up. Yep. That was exactly what happened there. Yeah. Um you're right Luca shot 42% from the uh the field and then 32% from 3. Yep. Um but I, I mean Luca was pre trade deadline, right? Before they traded his whole team, right? It will we'll say June 30th. Mm-hmm. He was you know he was, yeah, he was still garbage. Uh 43% from the field and 35% Dude from 2. Dude was two. chucking shots. Yeah. He was fantastic at doing it though. He had uh clutchest he had player. Average about 16 shots a game. So yep. So would you, you say that's Barrett, what RJ needs to do to get to that twenty point that Ricky's setting up? Probably, but I don't, I don't think RJ Barrett has anywhere near the handles that Luca has, nor the uh, court vision. So, mm-hmm. like, I think that Barrett's probably gonna have hand, like probably two turn. How many turnovers game did Luca have last year? Because mm-hmm. that's one thing people were talking about, like Barrett facilitating, mm-hmm. and in college it was as easy as throwing lobs and just dishing down to low post to Zion. 3.4. He was six turnovers, 3.4 tur- tur- uh, th- six assists to 3.4 turnovers. Yeah, I think Barrett will probably be like four turnovers, or four assists, three turnovers, kind of a guy. Mm-hmm. I think he can still facilitate, and there's definitely good options on that team, like Mitchell Robinson absolutely can go up there and grab the ball yeah. uh but yeah i just don't think that he's going to be a great shooter early on in his career i um, just i look at and the thing i'm looking at is mm-hmm. fizdale with his time with the grizzlies the two years he was there um the second year was kind of eh, because mike conley only played 12 games yeah but Didn't he also get fired was it the year he got fired yeah but yeah. the year before his first year there Mar- him and gasol conley and gasol were 19 and a half, 20 and a half point guys. I get yeah, that not veterans. one of them was a rookie, but I wonder if the Fizdale system is going to benefit where Julius can get his and RJ can get his also. I, and RJ yeah. can facilitate. I don't think, I, I think with that though, is I don't think he really set up a system there in Memphis. I think it was just those guys were there for so long that they just kind of let it run with, mm-hmm. with, with what, was, what was already there and set up. Um, so I, I don't know if that's really true. Um, but at least looking at rookies who have scored over 20 points per game, Luca obviously one of them, Blake was one of them, Carmelo did it, LeBron did it, Donovan Mitchell did it, KD did it, and Tyreek did it. And It's pretty elite company. Outside of Tyreek Evans. And um, he had a great year. He, he, had, he <laughs> had a fantastic he year. He peaked. Um, but looking at that, 
usage, 26 for Tyreek. Um, for KD, it was 28. For Donovan Mitchell, he really just became the guy on that team. Uh, 29% mm-hmm. usage for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeBron was 28%. That's shocking. Carmelo. Mello, yeah, I think that's probably the lowest <laughs> he's ever had. Uh, Carmelo, 28%. Blake was 27%. Yep. And I think Luca probably was near 30, right? Yeah, he was 30, 30 and a half. So yeah. if, we're, if we're looking at that. So, I okay, think, 25% plus usage or 26, right? Yeah, 26 well? was the lowest. Yep. Um, and if we're looking at usage, obviously the guy is, um, is, is, is James Harden. Um, when it comes to that, but at forty point five percent, but rarely are guys getting over that. I mean, KD was used like twenty nine percent of the, mm-hmm. the time last mm-hmm. year, so you're going to need to see a guy that is used a ton. Yep. And when we look at that roster of the Knicks, you have Randall, you have Bobby Portis, you have um, Dennis Morris, Smith. you have Dennis Smith, Lonzo you Trier, have Lonzo Trier, you have Kevin Knox. I don't know if there's enough Mitch ball Robinson. for him to score twenty. That, I think, would, that I think would be he's, my thing. I see him in like the, the 15 to 18 range pretty easily. It's just, like you said, the efficiency is going to be the question. And look, the Knicks are not going to be very close in a lot of these games, so they're going to have a lot of shots to take. Mm. I, I, I think that he's going to get his points, and like it's not going to be amazing. But you know what? At the end of the day, his, if you look at his stat line, it'll look okay. Yeah. Ricky, you got a stat line for us? I mean... Like a full... <sighs> Rebound, assist. I don't. The only thing I have is here's what I feel like with mm-hmm. the Knicks. It's going to be the three headed scoring monster is going to be RJ, Julius, and Dennis Smith. Do you think it's going to be a monster? Well, I mean, I say monster just because three headed <laughs> yeah. is usually yeah. a monster or dragon, you can say. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of though, just one of those like sad Facebook posts where it's like a three, <laughs> like it's like a two headed dog like, and like a third head is like laying like off. I would like to have hope. And Dennis it's Smith a Jr. Sur- being the one that's laying off. Trying to keep it's a Cerberus. Yeah. It's a Cerberus right now. It's yeah. got the three uh, dog Someone's heads still on watching it. this. Um, I mean, I think it's going to be similar to 2016 17 Memphis where someone's going to have 20, someone's going to have 19, two are going to be right there at the top. It's just out of the three, Dennis, Julius, and RJ. Who's going to be that kind of Zach Randolph kind of a um, point total where it's like, who's the 14-point guy? Who's that third? Where it was 20 for Conley, 19 for Gasol, and then it was 14 for Zach Randolph. Who out of these three for the Knicks is going to be that Zach Randolph character Mm -hmm. and have less points? Kevin Knox put up just shy of 13 points a game last year, and he struggled mightily. I think he gets gets pushed out of the way. 37, 34, 71. 37. 34. 71. I mean, I don't think... Uh, how many threes was he taking? Uh, he was taking five threes a game. Okay, RJ's probably going to be near seven or eight. Right? Wow. You think? I don't know. That's I'm just... I, I think six I mean, he's is just, probably... I think he's a nat, He's naturally yeah. more of a mm-hmm. perimeter player, so yeah. that's why I think that number would be going up. In college, how many did he take? 6.2 so, per yeah, game. Six a game probably seems about right. Okay, so least, six yeah. a game. On, and I think that 34 is probably fair. Might even go down to 30 for RJ. Yeah. Only shot thirty percent in college. Yeah. yeah, he might even go work. Even work. <laughs> no, no, you... he's not Russ. He's not going to. What Russ was it his up. free throw? Seventy five six. Ooh, he, he might go lower. Yeah, I mean, the thing with it's RJ gonna be is, but he's going to get his. His That's shot, his shot needs to be there. I think if <laughs> RJ is getting his points, he's trying to drive into the basket. The yeah, only for sure, for sure. The only difficult thing that that goes is that's also DSJ's game, also. So they're both going to be driving, but like That'll you said, interesting. you think RJ is going to be the guy. Like if there is a I, guy on the t- on the, on the score on the floor to score, it's going to be RJ. Some, and honestly, some people think, might say, "No, you're crazy. It's DSJ." No one's saying I think that. it's RJ. I, I don't think anyone's no one's saying, saying that. DSJ. No one I'll cares about you, uh, Ricky. I love you. You're the only person that was high on DSJ last week. I mean, hey, I, 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 I don't think, think anyone's looking player. for DSJ to be the the, the future on that team. Um, let's move now to the the other guys here: um, Derek White, Evan Fournier. Uh, Kevin Herter, also a young guy. Norm Powell finally getting a start after uh, Kawhi and DeMar leave. Dylan Brooks coming back from injury. Wesley Matthews going to the Bucks. Nick Batum still on the Hornets. Waiters still on the Heat. Any of those guys jump off the page for you? Uh, I think Waiters is an interesting conversation just because mm-hmm. we don't even know 100% that he's going to end up as a starter. Like, we we're trying to come up with hypothetical lineups for this team. I think the one we landed on was... Going to be Justice at the 1, Dion at the 2. Apparently, Goran Dragic is going to be at the yeah, 1. Yeah, he fans already hate us. 
Yeah. Well, and then they, Jimmy will be at the two and Justice will be at the three. That That's a lineup they can go to. They've it's, got mm-hmm. a lot of guys. Probably a better lineup, too, but I don't think Drogic is on the team. I think they probably will look to trade him just because of what Justice did as a point guard last week, last year. Yeah. No, I mean, he, he absolutely thrived. That was his best season, uh, half season even. Do you play Goran off ball then and just let Justice bring he the can, ball up? Yeah. Okay. He absolutely so maybe can we if, see that. if you want to. But you got Tyler Hero now. That's true. He was the summer league savior. So you would, you think that we, Waiters is at least going to start the season at the I think Waiters, yeah, because when Waiters was healthy, brought back, like there was a whole, I don't know if you guys remember the media shit that went down, like he was demanding playing time mm-hmm. and all that shit. Um, so, I don't know, I think that pointing him here right now is, we're, we're, we're kind of checking our bets, because Jimmy will be our three for them, which is fine. He, he plays wing, it doesn't really matter whether he's the two or the three. He's still a secondary ball handler. He's going to be there. He's going to be up there. Or, if you see what's going on on Instagram and stuff, or... or. D. Wade comes back for one more season Please and no. is there no. too. Please no. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think that that one's interesting because he's he was always that guy who was like, he was a high draft pick, bounced out of town in Cleveland, bounced out of town on OKC. Mm-hmm. And the Heat, like, he's not a terrible player. He had that, like, month-long run of Waiters County, which mm-hmm. is great and all. Uh, super disrespectful to Dwayne Wade, but it was hilarious. And I kind of like the cockiness. I just wish he brought it every night, you know? Well, and the big thing with him is he hasn't been healthy. 46 yeah. games, 30 games, and 44 games of the past three years in Miami. Yep. He's also not efficient, 41% nope. from the field. I can actually say that one and be right this time, which is good. <laughs> um, he has been able to move the ball, though, in his time um, pretty fairly well. 3.6 assists to, to two turnovers a game. Um, but I, I don't know exactly what... Deion Waiters can give to us at this point because he has gone through a lot of injuries and he has had to come back yep. year after year. And you wonder at how, at what point, or to what point, to what extent, his body has broken down on him at this at this point. And I think he might be in decent shape, but he's also a guy that might bounce out of it at, at any point because we have seen fat Deion Waiters before. So yeah, we have. I, I, I think that Waiters is interesting just because he can fit a role on a team, and he can fit that outside shooter role. He was still above the league average last year at 36%. Yep. I just think... I just want to be excited about the young kids. I want Tyler Hero or Kendrick Nunn even mm-hmm. to get you know minutes. Nunn could be fun. Like, both of those guys gain more minutes, move waiters out. How likely is happy. it, do you think, that we see Hero in the lineup, the starting I, lineup? I think we could see it by at the latest midseason, because I think that waiters is actually going to get pushed out like I, I think it's gonna be if goron is there like i know we were yep. saying we think he's not gonna be on the team long but if he gets is there he's gonna be the one then they got jimmy and justice and it's like who would you rather have it be the two the second two guard off the bench i'm going with the young tyler hero than Dion waiters yeah i mean i, I yeah i'd like to agree with you there just because i liked watching tyler mm-hmm. hero in summer league i liked him in college like, he's a guy we've been following for a couple of years now. But I would have Hero lead, and I'm using my air quotes, lead the second unit, get some confidence under his legs, and then maybe move him into that yeah. starting lineup or move him into some starting situations I, here or there. I kind of like the idea of having Justice out there run the point because we've seen it be mm-hmm. successful before. Have Jimmy out there because we know Jimmy likes to attack and drive. And since Hero's such an elite three-point shooter, that would give you a lot of spacing. And then and having Drogic, if he's too. on the team... Tragic could run that second unit, and he's probably really good in that position at that point now because you can control his minutes, keep yeah. his legs fresh, and he might be still. I mean, he's still able to attack. He was an all star two years ago. Sorry, Ben Simmons. Um, <laughs> but he he was, yep. you know, he, he yep. still has the ability to attack and pick apart defenses. So uh, the the good thing about the Heat, I don't think they're they're in a weird spot because outside of Jimmy, they don't have another star. They're in Cap Hell. Mm-hmm. They're in Cap Hell, but outside of Jimmy, they don't have another star, but they do have some really quality pieces. Yeah, and I like that's the, why I was I like shocked that. when they didn't make the playoffs last year. Yeah, the second unit I kind of like is Goran and Tyler Hero one two punch in that. That'll actually be really nice because mm-hmm. you got two guys who can ball handle and create. So. Yeah, for sure. Let's move to the next one and we'll go to uh Dylan Brooks. Uh mm. guy that was out last year. I think he only played 18 games. We were really questioning the Grizzlies lineup. Uh, kind of with the Waiters thing, we were also questioning the Timberwolves lineup, but we'll get to Wiggins in the next one. Uh, we were questioning the Spurs, and we are questioning the uh, Clippers. So let's get the lineup stuff out of the way. Uh, Brooks and Derek White are in this section. Um, when it comes to the Grizzlies lineup, we know two guys are for sure in there. John Morant at the one, mm-hmm. tr- uh, Triple J at the four, and you could even say at the five, Jonas Valanciunas. So how do you think they should fill out that lineup? Obviously, we have Brooks now at the, the two right now, but... <laughs> You know, there's been arguments for, for many players on this team because they are pretty deep. 
They are. Well, they're they're deep, but they're deep full of like B guys. Mm -hmm. You know, not one of those extra interesting guys. guys. Interesting, sure. Because because we don't know where these guys stand right. yet. It's still early in their careers. You know, Bruno's still very young. He had you know a, a pretty decent showing. I love uh, Bruno. Uh, obviously, Brent, uh, Jan and Jark. Jan and Jark uh, yep. has, has been a wonder at summer league, but we don't really know what his position is yet. So there's a lot of guys that we're just kind of questioning what their true fit yeah. is. We know they're talented. No, I, I agree. I think Josh Jackson's the only guy who here could stand out and try to take that two guard position just because that would give you incredible wingspan. If you wanted to go with a Josh Jackson uh, and a Bruno or, yeah, Josh Jackson, Bruno, uh, Triple J, like, you got wingspan for days. You're basically, you know, the Orlando Magic at that point. But, and, and their defense would be really good. But I do think Dylan Brooks, you know, the whole reason Dylan Brooks had hype was basically the end of his uh, first year in the NBA. Like, post-All-Star game break, it was like 15 uh, points a game. He was putting up decent efficiency numbers. He had a lot of breakout performances. And I know that it's a very small fraction to look at, but he definitely was able to show, like, there's an extra gear here. He's not on the same level as, you know, uh, guys like Devin Booker or Zach Levine who are making that big step up. But, like, he has some of that it factor where he can just catch fire and go. So I think he's a guy who I'm good with him being the starting two guard. It's just how much of that can he recapture now after basically having almost a full year off? Well, and I just think of, like, you mentioned Josh Jackson, and I don't want to be the negative Nancy here, well, but he it's actually, like... I didn't, you just I didn't say, mention Josh Jackson. No, I'm talking about Dave. But he had dummy. Um, well, but th- th- thanks for bringing him yeah. up. Yeah. Um, Dave mentioned him, and, like, I just... He's got to prove himself before I even <laughs> think about putting it. Like, when we were talking about who would be the two guard, I think Dylan Brooks is, like, the easy decision because, like... Yeah, they could put Josh Jackson there, but he's got to prove himself. Like he's mm-hmm. he's on his now second team, where it's like the Suns were like when when the Suns were giving you away. Sorry, Suns fans, but that's not good. That's I not don't good know. The career. argument that I when saw the Suns are giving you away. The argument that I saw for Josh Jackson was that he'd bring athleticism to the lineup. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have probably oh. three guys that are more athletic than him, and uh, Ja and Brandon Clark, but. Josh Jackson is an incredible athlete, I'm so it saying, would bring athleticism to that starting line. I'm just saying him as, like, a reliable, like, mm-hmm. person. No, I agree Like, with you. in that locker I agree room. With you. Um, and then you look at Grayson, it's like, I would love to say Grayson Allen starting point guard, but nope. Grayson's a backup. Backup shooting like, guard, yeah. He is a backup shooting guard. He'll give you that energy. He might punch a guy or try to punch the ball out of his hands, air quotes. Um, he gets or frustrated trip a guy. He um, Yeah, he issues. does, and he lets it get the best of him. Yep. Um, but, like, he Still is... Good a two guard um, in my mind where it's like Dylan Brooks is like for me the easiest where when you were like, oh, are we sure about Dylan Brooks? I was like, really? We're going to question Dylan Brooks here being the the starting two guard for the Grizzlies? Yeah, because there's yeah. so many people out there. Because, I mean, you mentioned Josh Jackson. You mentioned Grayson Allen. Uh, he, they acquired uh, D'anthony Melton as well. He could he could fit there uh, if they wanted to. They he's also the, could go he's massive. The only and, one. And, and Kyle I, Anderson's another guy who – Slow mo mm-hmm. is a, a really good player. He's he controls the ball. He's he doesn't turn the ball over. They can go huge and, and put out Play Kyle three Anderson. Wings. The yeah. Um. You know, it, it is positionless basketball at this point. We're really just using the shooting guard, point guard, small forward method, just because it's been there for so long. Mm-hmm. And that's what most likely people are going to search for. Um. But I mean, in the end, when it comes to it, like Kyle Anderson's probably their their fifth best player yeah. on the team. He's better than Dylan Brooks. He's better than Josh Jackson. He's better than uh, whoever you want. You know, Bruno. He's better than. You know, whoever they're going to, Kyle Anderson's most likely their sixth man. And if they're going for their most talented lineup, I would probably put Kyle Anderson in it. It's just he doesn't fit at that natural two because he mm-hmm. is so big. Yep. The one guy I think that's going to shake up the starting lineup this year for the Grizzlies is uh, Jandon Jark. Yeah, no, or he's, Brandon Clark for he's got a chance new viewers. to take over as a starting like, three. He's, he's going to be a guy that is going to be in that second unit, get some minutes. But I think as this season goes on, the Grizzlies are going to go. You know what? Not giving him more minutes is going to be very stupid. Yeah, I mean, maybe you think, just you think he's going to force their hand pretty minutes. much. Yeah. Well, I when you say moving uh, Kyle to the two, I almost look at it and go, I know it might be a little bit risky sometimes, but it's like, hey, if Brandon Clark's playing good, slide him in at maybe the three and have a lineup of Ja, Kyle. Jandon, Jaron, and Jonas as yeah. your starting lineup. What was the lineup that I couldn't say? Oh, it was. Ja, Josh, Jandon, Triple J, and oh no, it was Jay Crowder. That's the other yeah, one. Yeah, you kept trying to throw Jay Crowder in there. Well, I'm Jay, like... No, I wasn't doing that. That's what Memphis Grizzlies fans mm-hmm. were saying on Reddit. Nick, so, can you please correct it them? It was it was 
John Morant. <laughs> As a fellow Memphis Grizzlies fan. Dave, Dave playing nice now to the Grizzly fans again. John, John Morant, <laughs> Dylan Brooks, Jay Crowder, Triple J, and Jonas. Yeah. Is the, the lineups that I have seen. Yep. Um, and again, good depth with, with Jay Crowder. He's not great, but he's 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 solid. Um, I just don't like him, and this is a young team, so you might as well let the young talent roll. That's that's my thought. It's like this is a team with no expectations. I want I want to give you know Brandon Clark as I'm sorry, Jan and Jarkson minutes as possible. <laughs> Bruno is still young, even though he was two years away from being two years away. Like he's he's maybe now there. I I just there's like Andre Guadala's contract on that team is hilarious. You know we understand why it's there. The question is you know will there be a buyout situation? Will there be a trade? And they're just getting another bad contract and take on draft picks again. You got Dwight Howard's contract on that team. Same mm-hmm. thing. Like. It's just interesting at the moment. So, like, they're a team with a ton of potential, a ton of young kids. I still like Dylan Brooks. Just give him a chance to have a breakout season. That's my thought is you have a true point guard out there. You've got an amazing floor spacing for. What, what do you think is, his wing is, though? Or his, 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 his uh, ceiling is? I don't know. Dylan Brooks. Ceilings. Uh, I think it'd probably be, like, a 16-game score. I think he's, okay. like, a good third option kind I, of guy. So. I, I, I see him right where we have Josh Richardson. I think they could be similar players. They're decent defenders. They could be good shooters from the outside. They're decent ball handlers. Like they're 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 yeah. well rounded guys. Yeah, they're but I don't think guys. either of those guys can be ever crack, cracking the top ten. You know, unless they become like elite, elite. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. And but but I mean, yeah, Dylan Brooks. I think coming off that injury, definitely someone you could take a look at. Um, let's move to the next one. I think the final one, at least when it comes to lineup stuff. Derek White. We put Derek White at the two guard for them. Obviously, they have DeMar DeRozan on the roster. DeMar DeRozan, pretty much the pinnacle of a two guard. Um, but they are in a pretty. He's a three. He's, he's a three for them. He's a three for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and most likely, he's a three. I was talking to uh, our boy. Uh, yeah, I always mess up his name. He's our Spurs fan on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, Jay. J- I'm just going to call him Jay. You could call him Jay. Um, when it, I was talking to him, he was saying <laughs> you just broke Sean. Likely, Demar would be playing the three, Lamarcus at the four, and Hurdle at the five. Or and then Lamarcus down and Rudy Gay at the four. Yes, that was the other thing too. So you pretty much have to figure out where Demar's going to play, where Rudy's going to play, and where Lamarcus is going to play. And Dejounte is your starting one. Yep. So it's really, do you want to have Hurdle in the lineup, and then what two guard do you want in there as well? So they're in a place where it's the Spurs, and we have no idea what they can do because they can do anything. They can put Marco Bellinelli out That's there the if they wanted to. If you to. look at their like depth at the point, you've it's got Patty Mills, Dejounte, insane. and Derek White, and at the two you've got Demar, Bellinelli, Bryn Forbes, who started almost all of last was year, was going to be our guy, and Lonnie Walker. Yeah, like, and even then, Quindary Weatherspoon is in their their G League, and <laughs> yeah, it's then like a carried away. But yeah, he's very, John. Good. he's very good. But like, I mean, they are absolutely loaded at the guard position. Yep, they are. They're in a fantastic spot and. If we, you wanted Bryn Forbes, you could make a fantastic case for Bryn Kid Forbes. He shoots lights he, out. He brings you know spacing to that team that desperately needs it. Yep. Um, just because when they you know they don't shoot often from deep, but when they do, they they want you to be efficient, which Bryn Forbes is. Yep. Um, you could make an argument that Dejounte might slide to the two, and you you put a guy like Derek White at the one. Like there, you're probably going to see so many options out there. You can make yeah. a case, for, obviously, for Demar Derozan being there and have Rudy Gay play the three, Lil Marcus Aldridge play the four, and then Pirtle at the five. Um, you could put whatever you want there, but we put Derek White in. Obviously, he had a great po- uh, playoffs. Ricky gave him mm-hmm. a wet boy, and there's even rumors coming out that Derek White is the best player with Team USA. Uh, that's coming from uh, SB Nation's Pound in the Rock, the uh, the Spurs uh, Spurs Twitter. Um, there was high praise from Jeff Van Gundy saying that he was the best player on the floor. So, is there a Van Gundyan rant? Uh, no, <laughs> no, it was it's Jeff Van Gundy and Jeff, Chant. It was oh, Jeff sorry, Van yeah. Gundy, not yep. Stan. Talking mm-hmm. Game of um, Thrones. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> Derek White is Derek White is is, is was, proved himself last year. I think probably enough to be a starter. Um, what do you guys think about D White? My biggest thing yeah. is consistency because, like, I look at it where ever since like the calendar, I'm going to use the calendar turn to. Um, March, where it's like he started March on a tear, I'm going to say, where it was like 14, 11, 18, then it's like seven points, but then 23, then a three game, but then 13, 12, 3, 18, and then kind of cooled off before we saw like a 23 point game against um, Atlanta. The Hawks. I know it's a Hawks. Literally the worst defensive team ever. But even the playoffs, like he came out against the Nuggets. 16 point performance, 17, 36. I was like, holy shit, wet boy for Derek White. Yep. And then he immediately fell off the face of the earth with an eight point game the next game. So it's like, for me with Derek White, like if he's going to be the starter, 
I want to see consistency. Like, I want to see the Derek White that we saw between, let's say, March 2nd and I'll say March 18th. Like, you can have a game or two in there where it's like 7-3. Like, everyone has an off night every once in a while, but you can't have a stretch that he had at the end of March where it was like four points, four points, six points, six points. That's bad news, Bears. The the problem, or the only thing I'd like add a caveat to that is just it's the Spurs, so their mm. offense, the way they change how that ball moves mm-hmm. varies game to game. So he's mm. not getting maybe the same amount of shots every game during the playoffs. But like you can't and... have a Charlotte game where it goes 0 for 10. Yeah. Yeah, but also he was the third <laughs> option on that team, mm-hmm. or f- really fourth, fourth option, option, because you had DeMar, you had Rudy Gay, you had LaMarcus Aldridge. A lot of mouths to feed out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. so like that's the thing. Like, if they fully go into him, yes. Like the start of that series against Denver, he had a great amount of success. But then Denver made some adjustments on their end, and the Spurs went to decide, hey, guess what? We're going to play around LaMarcus Aldridge and um, DeMar Rosen more. Mm-hmm. Let's make sure they get the better opportunities. Like, it's ball movement. That's the thing. So, like, yeah. the Spurs and, are never a team is... where they're like, this is our pecking order, and this mm-hmm. is consistency. And this is a team that's never like, we're going to score 120, and that's how we're going to beat you. Sure. They're going to go slow after you. They're going to play defense. It's tough for guys to consistently put up big numbers on that team because mm-hmm. that's just not the way well, they play. The thing I'll look at is, like, looking at the shooting attempts, like the game against New York where he had three. Um, even the game 13, he shot well on the seven shots he had. But the game against New York where he went one of five. The game against the Cleveland Cavaliers where he had six points, he was two of three. Like, those games, all right, give you a pass. Because you're right. Like, yep. those, you didn't get the Just amount get of the shots, touches, yeah. and it's hard to get it. But, like, if you're getting ten or more touches, like, if you're getting double-digit touches, then I'm going to say you can't have a three of ten game against the Kings. You can't have a zero of ten game um, like he had against Charlotte. Like, I get there's times where it's, like, maybe the flow of the team, he... Yep kind of got out of rhythm, but if you're going to be taking 10 or more shots a game, you can't be shooting 30 or less like from the field. Like I need to be seeing more than but I mean, 3 of 10, 0 of 10. The mm-hmm. dude on the season still shooting splits was 48, 34, 77. Like, that's not bad. No, not I didn't bad say he's bad, but I'm, I'm just but saying like, consistency. When you say consistency, and I'm saying his shooting numbers for the whole season – are from a two point range mm-hmm. very efficient. Three obviously is below average by two percent, and from the line, pretty spot on seventy mm-hmm. percent. So, I I think that like yeah he's definitely had some some bad nights, but I think it's just all up to what do the Spurs want to have his role be. Right. I don't know that I know. Final guys uh, that we didn't talk about: Evan Fournier, Red Mamba, Norman Powell, Nick Batum, Wes Matthews. Any guys that we need to talk about the here? The Red Mamba. What do you what do you want to talk about? I just Mark? I can't wait to see what he's going to do this season. I can't wait to see what this Hawks team is going to do this year because it's like yeah we talked about Trey, Trey like Trey Young is the leader of the like he's the Nick Carter of this boy band where everybody wants to talk about Trey Young but like Kevin Herter I can't wait to see what next step he takes this year. I know he was only a rookie last year but like. Does he score more points this year? Is he going to get better defensively and help out defensively? Is him and DeAndre Hunter going to mesh defensively together where it's like they're kind of being a two-man front to kind of help Trey to where it's like we're not harping on Trey for his defense as much. We will. He's now got two he's guys defensively that are helping him, kind of like with Steph Curry where we don't mm-hmm. harp on his defense as much because he's got Clay Thompson who's phenomenally next to him. Also, just this Hawks team with the lineups that they're able to run with Herter and Hunter, John Collins, and obviously Trey. I look at their second unit, and it's phenomenal as well. Like Alan Crabb, uh, Cam Reddish, Jabari Parker, Bruno Fernando. Like this team, the question I wanted to ask in this one, because I saw it this week on Fanside, the Jump also talked about it. No. Do they make the playoffs? Does no. this team make the playoffs? You have to play some moniker of defense to make the playoffs. And they don't. And it's that simple. I love John Collins. I love Trey Young. I love their young talent. They're a 2K mm-hmm. team, though. They're 110% a 2K team. Do you think that Herter will get better defensively to where, like, you say they Herter's don't play not defense? not terrible, but, like, like but is he going to get better? Because he needs vet, to. When he was drafted, everyone said Clay Thompson. And yeah. that is a no, big they said Clay, shoot to they fill. Said, they said Clay Thompson light. And yeah. that was even a stretch there. But still, that's a big shoot to fill. Um, with when it comes to he's he's only in year two, so that's that's iffy. Clay didn't become Clay, I don't think, in year two. Um, the Bucks are for sure a lock. Sixers are for sure a lock. Celtics are a lock. 
Pacers are a lock. You could probably say the Nets are a lot. Yep. Lock. You could probably say the Raptors are a lock as well. So that really only leaves you know two spots open. So. And the Magic you, have gotten better. Yeah, and you would probably put the Heat in there as well. And yeah. the Pistons are are great. Yeah. So really, it's it'd be tough. It's and, a and you're up. even saying the Bulls are make the playoffs. So that mm-hmm. even only allows you one spot there. So yeah. I think it's I think it's difficult for them to make the playoffs. I know. I, I don't I think agree. It's, I, I, it's possible, but I don't think it's it's going to happen. I know defensive win shares and everything, but um, for Clay Thompson, rookie year was a point three. And then when we got to year two, he was a 2.6 and 3.2, 3.1, 2.6. So really after that first year, he jumped up defensive win share wise and was right near where he's been his but entire was, year. But he, was he clay though? Was it, What was he doing shooting wise? Um, he went from 12 and a half points to 16 and a half. Um, and three point wise, he actually went down. He shot forty one percent from three the first season, then forty percent the second mm. season. I wouldn't be what a, slacker. Slacker. What a bump. But, what a he, but he was averaging two would, more attempts per game I would from uh, beyond. Be the shocked to see that happen with Herder if he goes down a little bit from thirty eight. But I think the biggest thing because you know I think his attempts just might go up and that's natural. Yep. Um, the biggest thing that I want to see him is just do more outside of that. I mean. Half of his shots last year were three point attempts. He was never driving to the rim. He barely went to the line <laughs> a, a, one time a game. No, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if he's going to become Clay Thompson, his game needs to, or if, if any form of Clay Thompson, right. his game needs to do, develop more. I agree. Which he right now he is a very, he's a one tone player. Yeah, he's very similar to how we saw OG and Newby his rookie year. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like same behind three point line, play defense, kid. Yeah. Like, that's all we need you for. And yeah, no, I think Herder's got a lot of upside, but they've got a lot of young talent, a lot of miles to feed, so we'll see how that lands. All right, that's going to do it for 21 through 30. We still got 11 through 20 and 1 through 10 to get to, so stay tuned for that.